Okay, class. So now we're going to look at the Chapter 4 Assessment Breakdown. If we look at the Chapter 4 Assessment, we see that we had five conditional statement questions, P to Q questions. We had two distance questions. We had five parallel lines and transversal questions. We had five angle side match questions. Those are the questions that say that match the smallest angle of a triangle with the smallest side, and it matches the uh, biggest angle of a triangle with the biggest side and vice versa. We had five polygon sum uh, questions, which are basically in reference to how many uh, degrees are inside of a polygon, um, how many sides does a polygon have. We had four side angle side or side 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 questions questions that were uh, re requiring us to use the side angle side rule or side 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 rule or angle angle side rule to prove that triangles are congruent and you know we, we know all the rules that that we should uh, that we know and they asked us about them we had the uh, we had three midpoint questions those were gimme questions and we had one isosceles triangle question and we also had one proof which if it looked a little bit intimidating, I probably would have left it until the end and gotten easier points here uh, and just left that to the end if you didn't feel comfortable with that. So let's start off with the, uh, let's start off with the conditional statement questions. Let's start off with the conditional statement questions. One of the questions, one of the conditionals, well, before we start talking about conditional questions, remember, guys, you can review the conditional uh, statement video on, on the page here, or let's just have a little quick review here. I know that P to Q is my hypothetical, is my, is my statement. Then, well, then I know that if I take my P and my Q and I negate both of them, if I make them the opposite, not P and not Q, I know that that is the inverse. Okay. I know then that if I take my P and Q and I reverse them, for example, Q to P, uh, I know then that is my converse. And if you forgot the converse, remember, it's like a conversation where words are going back and forth. Well, if words are going forward from one, one time, during the next part of the conversation, they're going to be what? They're going to be going back, back and forth. So we just switch them. That's the converse. And then if I take my P and my Q and if I take my P and my Q and I negate them and I switch them, for example, I have negation P, excuse me, negation Q, negation P, that is my contrapositive. That is the contrapositive. So this is my conditional statement, P to Q. If I negate them, if I say the opposite, just saying no, if they're yes, I say no, that's the inverse. The converse is like a conversation where we go back and forth. And then the contrapositive, it's both of these together. You're switching them and you're negating them. So let's take a look at one of our statements here. It says, if corresponding parts of two triangles are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent. Then the two triangles, okay? So if, correspond, if corresponding parts of two triangles are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent. This is my P and this is my Q. Well, they want to know which statement is the converse of the statement above. They want to know which statement is the converse. So remember, the converse, what are we doing? We're just switching our P and Q. So if I originally said then that if corresponding parts of triangles are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent, all I'm doing for the converse is just switching my uh, hypothesis and my conclusion. So then it would state that instead of saying if corresponding parts of two triangles are congruent, then the two triangles are congruent, well then just switch it. And you would say if the two triangles are congruent, then the corresponding parts of two triangles are congruent. And that would be your answer. Switch for the for the converse, excuse me, for the converse, all you're doing is switching your hypothesis and your conclusion. Let's take a look at another question. It says, if two lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. They're asking us which statement is logically equivalent to the statement above. Well, in this instance, they're not asking for the inverse, converse, or contrapositive. They're asking you which statement is logically equivalent to the statement above. And if you remember in class, we said that the contrapositive is a statement that is um, that is logically equivalent 
to its conditional statement. So this is just like a sneaky way of asking you if you know what the contrapositive is. So anytime they ask you of a statement which is logically equivalent to another, your best bet is to go with the contrapositive. If you remember, we talked about true statements and that's a good way to know if a statement is actually true. So then your, the contrapositive is, well, take a look here. My contrapositive, I'm switching my hypothesis and my conclusion and I am also negating them. And I'm also negating them. So it says, if two lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. Well then, the contrapositive of that would be that if the corresponding angles are not congruent, then two lines are not parallel. Then two lines are not parallel. Let's take a look at another question. It says, sorry here. It says, if Sally goes to the sorry, if Sally goes to the store, then she buys apples. If Sally goes to the store, then she buys apples. And they're asking for what is the contrapositive of the statement above. Again, they're asking us about the what? The contrapositive. They, when we're switching our hypothesis and our conclusion, and we're negating them. Well, if Sally goes to the store, then she buys apples. The contrapositive of that should probably be then that if she doesn't buy apples, then Sally didn't go to the store. Let's take a look at another question. You can see here we had a lot of conditional statement questions. It says here, um, in a certain year, the scientist Anwan Henry Becquerel left a sample of a uranium compound next to a photographic plate. Later, Becquerel found that the plate had become fogged. With this fateful, with this fateful accident, he discovered radioactivity. And then they give us a statement, our conditional statement. If a substance contains uranium, then it is radioactive. Which of the following is the inverse of this statement? Okay? If a substance contains uranium, then it is radioactive. Well, remember, guys, that the inverse is just the negation of my conditional statement. The inverse is just the negation of my conditional statement. So then the answer would be is, if a substance does not contain uranium, then it is not radioactive. And the last question on conditional statements. It says, write the contrapositive of the statement below. So again, guys, they're stressing a lot on the contrapositive because they know that we know the inverse is pretty fair enough. All you're doing is just negating them. And the converse, all we're doing is what? We're just switching them. And the contrapositive, we're switching them and we're negating them. So it says here, if the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 540 degrees, then the polygon is not a hexagon. If the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 540 degrees, then the polygon is not a hexagon. Let me write that down. If the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 540 degrees, then, and that's a big word, that's my arrow, then the polygon is not a hexagon. Is not a hexagon. So we can see here that this first part is my P. This first part is my P. And this last part is my Q. So we're not not only are we going to switch them, we're also going to negate them. So it'll be negation Q to negation P. Well the Q says what's what's Q? It says the polygon is not a hexagon. That's Q. So what's the negation of it? Well it would be then the polygon. Excuse me, so you can see there. So as you can see here, this is my P, this is my Q, and the contrapositive, we are switching them and negating them. So it would be then, if this is my Q, the polygon is not a hexagon, well, the con contrapositive is negation to negation, negation Q to negation P. So if this is my Q and I'm negating it, then if the polygon is not a hexagon, then the negation of it is the polygon is a, hex is a hexagon. And we want to start this with the word if. So if the polygon is a hexagon, then 
negation P. Well, what does P say? P says that if the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 540, well then we're gonna say the negation of that. Then the sum of the interior angles of a of a polygon isn't 540 degrees isn't 540 degrees and we'll stop there as our first part of our chapter 4 assessment breakdown so we're done with